Hey guys, welcome back to Girls Next Level. We are back. Bridget, how's your week? It was a lot of meetings, podcasts. You were in most of them, so you know. (laughs) And I'm excited for this coming week too, because I get to do my first Halloween event. I know I've I've told you guys that I was like uh, backed up before and I didn't do them ahead of time, but now I've got my first one scheduled and I'm excited. Which one is it? This is a small one on Thursday night where uh, Lorene, my friend Lorene and I are going to the corn maze one, which is really fun. It's literally in a corn maze. Where is it? In uh, Covina. Oh. oh, no, wait, sorry. I get so confused. Uh-huh. Chino. Oh, okay. <laughs> I love it. And then I'm going to Universal on the 20th. Fun. I can't wait. Did you ever get the big killer clowns from outer space donut that they make? It like has cotton candy on it. Oh, yeah. I think we got it once and we shared it, but my favorite's the Bart Simpson donut. Those are so good. They do so many cute themed Halloween ones at Universal and themed Halloween food. Do you know they even have a a Texas Chainsaw Massacre barbecue? No. Joy inside Universal? <laughs> no. I mean, I'm morbid, I guess, but I just think that's amazing. That is so <laughs> funny. Oh, my God. How was your week? It was good. My boyfriend was feeling a little under the weather, so I was just taking care of him, which Aww. I don't like to see him under the weather, but I do like taking care of him, I've discovered. Like, if I'm just going to lay in bed all day and get you tea, like, that's very cozy. Aww, I like it. Yeah, it was, so it was a good week. And this week, I'm taking my kids to our special Halloween event this year we're going to Madame Leota's Masquerade Ball at Club 33 in Disneyland and I'm excited about it but I don't know how much of it is like sit down dinner style so I'm a little bit nervous about my youngest like if he's gonna have the patience for it oh. but I, I guess they're ready for kids at all time though so yeah it's Disney so we are on the home stretch with these first three episodes. And these first three, like I've said before, are a little different because this is where the producers are trying to characterize us a certain way. And I wanted to say, too, that we've been seeing the sweetest messages from you guys saying like, oh, I didn't see you like that because your personality comes out later. And we appreciate that so much. And yeah. yeah, our personalities do come out later. I saw all of you guys' sweet messages and being so supportive and saying you never saw me like that. And I really, really appreciate it because when I rewatched that episode, it really affected me. And I know I told you guys all about it. And I appreciate all the support and love that you guys sent. And you guys are right. Our personalities do come out later. You can't keep them hidden forever. But we still have to take it episode by episode. So you guys just have to bear with us through these first three. But there was a lot of fun stuff in this episode, too, that I completely had forgotten about. Yeah, me too. Like the jazz festival and seeing more of the staff like Brian and Carlina and the super cute backyard barbecue that we threw for Kendra and seeing Destiny in this episode. No, that was so fun. So Destiny Davis, the playmate who's in this episode, we hadn't seen her since like... Since we left the mansion, I think, or before. I know. It's been so long. So I tracked her down on Instagram and we got together. We went to Disneyland a couple weeks ago. Uh, Sorry, guys. I'm always there. But really it was like a convenient meetup spot for the three of us like kind of a halfway point yeah so we caught up with destiny and she is thriving and she looks fantastic and all the things so that was so fun so how do you feel about this episode overall Well, like I said, there was a lot of fun things to it, but I am a little nervous getting into it, not because of content, like content wise, it's not a traumatic episode for me. It's just kind of light and fun. I just don't want to be misunderstood when we talk about this episode because clearly this is a Kendra heavy episode and we're talking about somebody who's not here and we want to be honest about everything we were feeling then everything we're feeling now but we also want to do this in the most respectful way possible yeah I mean like you said it's a very Kendra heavy episode her name is in the title and as we said before the producers even said this was her episode like Yeah. Episode one was yours. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Sadly, episode two was mine. Yeah. But you guys have been so nice about it. Thank you so much. (laughs) And this one's Kendra's episode, and we have to dig into it. Yeah, and I think we've done a pretty good job being respectful talking about episodes one and two as well. And when it comes to these first three episodes, everything we complain about that has to do with Kendra has to do with how the producers placed her. It's absolutely nothing Kendra's doing. And I know it's really tempting to to listen to this and hear us complain about something that Kendra's attached to and just be like, oh, they're talking shit. But for these first three episodes, we really 
don't have anything bad to say about her. But I'm afraid because I'm complaining about the way the producers placed us and how I feel like they kind of did a better job with her. I'm afraid it'll come off as shit talking. And I just ask that you guys listen with an open mind and think about what we're really talking about. Because at the time, even when we filmed this, we were all getting along. Yeah. And I don't think anybody was trying to like step on anybody's toes or do anything weird like that. No. And it's important for us to be honest and open about everything that we were feeling. So otherwise, I mean, there'd just be no point in doing the podcast. Absolutely. (laughs) And as we've always said, Kendra's welcome to come on if there's anything she wants to clarify. So if things seem a little lopsided in these first three episodes... It makes me wonder why would one person be so favored? And I don't really have the answer to that. I have heard that E insisted that Prometheus, the production company, hire a showrunner to work underneath the executive producer who had experience in reality TV, which is understandable because like we've said before, Kevin Burns really only had like documentary experience and that kind of thing. He'd never done a reality show. So they had them hire this guy and everything I'm about to say about him from here on out is alleged. It's just stuff I've heard secondhand, but it kind of helps me paint a picture as to what was going on. He didn't last on the show very long. And the rumors I've heard is because, you know, he was sitting at, you know, mission control. What do they what do they call that tent on set where you watch what's oh. going, the director watches what's going on? Oh, my God. What is it? Called? Why am I blanking on that? Video Village. Video Village. (laughs) So he's back at Video Village watching everything, you know, telling people what to do. And I think at one point in time, the camera people reported back and they're like, we don't feel comfortable. We don't know what kind of a show we signed up for because allegedly this producer was telling them, zoom in on their boobs, get them changing, stuff like that. Follow them in the bathroom to undress, follow them in the closet, like, you know, follow them and get inappropriate content. But to a, I know the show does that anyway, but this was Mm -hmm. to like another level to where the field producers, meaning the people that are standing next to the cameraman and getting all the shots and the cameraman were feeling uncomfortable about it. Yeah, so that person eventually, you know, departed the show for whatever reason. I don't know if it was their decision or whose decision or whatever. I don't know. But that person departed the show. But I remember a rumor at the time, like when that person departed the show, I think it was mid-season of season one. I remember the rumor I heard about why that person left was because that person was obsessed with Kendra and only wanted to film Kendra and really liked Kendra because she would hang out in the butler's pantry and talk to everybody and talk to all the butlers, which I can kind of see that because they're kind of coming off the original pilot concept, which was supposed to be about the staff. And you can see in these first three episodes, there's still a lot of staff. So maybe they were like, oh, we really like that interaction. But anyway, this producer supposedly, according to the rumors I heard, was like obsessed with Kendra and only wanted to make the show about her. So I think a lot of the influence was coming from there in these first three episodes. And then by the time executive producer Kevin sees all the footage and everything, the die has already been cast. So it's just kind of easier for everybody to roll with what's been established character wise. For them. (laughs) Yeah, easier for them. Yeah, so that could be one of the reasons. I definitely don't think it was Hef saying Kendra needs to be the main character. I don't know if Kevin started off thinking that. I think eventually he rolled into that, but I think it might've originated from that producer. And it's, it's, Extra offensive to me, too, because talking to the staff... Well, I think we should talk about the no fraternization Mm. rule, too, by the way. Okay. So I was not that friendly with the staff. Like, I was very business-like, but I was friendly. Like, I would get them all gift cards for Christmas and stuff like that. Like, I wanted them to know how much I appreciated them and everything. I never tried to have, like, weird demanding requests or anything (laughs) like that. But I was very businesslike. And the reason I was very businesslike and didn't really like stand around and fraternize is there was a very strict no fraternization rule. And I think it started, or at least the awareness that I had of the rule started like right after I moved in, a rumor erupted that one of Hef's girlfriends was sleeping with one of the butlers. And allegedly it was happening like behind the movie screen on the tiger print couch in the living room. Yeah. And Hef was very upset about it. And, you know, I, it was made very clear that you're not to be seen like alone with a butler or talking too long with a butler. So I was terrified of getting caught looking too friendly with a butler. Yeah. I had heard that story, but I had always fraternized with the, 
the staff, um, I don't know. It's just sort of who I am. I'm just chatty and friendly and I spend a lot of time down there and I hang out with them and I knew about their nothing, nothing flirty, nothing yeah. like it was always on a very appropriate level. But like I know about their families. I know when it's someone's birthday, I knew like, you know, stuff mm-hmm. like that. And and I enjoyed that. And especially when you're in such a bubble at the mansion and you have a very isolated amount of friendships that it felt good to have uh, these other friendships too yeah well I was very close with Mary yeah and um but that was somebody I felt safe being close to you know I didn't feel like that with the butlers and I don't think anybody ever thought you were like getting it on with the butler no I don't think so no one ever (laughs) no and I heard that Kendra got yelled at for being down there once too like in the very early days like Hef walked in and she was like in the pantry talking to people well because I feel like a lot of times she would take it to inappropriate levels like be down there twerking and like overly friendly kind of thing not that she was flirting or actually doing anything appropriate but definitely in a way that some people might consider it inappropriate look and be like oh what's going on here yeah I also used to go down to the kitchen at night too because there was a, a chef there named Ramon and um, I was learning Spanish at the time and so we would do Spanish lessons like he would I would only speak to him in Spanish he would only speak to me in Spanish and it was like amazing <laughs> like yeah and you were also very close with like Brian Alea but they don't really show that relationship too much I'm hoping like later on they will because Brian Alea and I were very close and we still talk mm-hmm. and we still do things together sometimes so um, I'm definitely hoping that they they will show that relationship because we love working on parties and events together and getting creative and stuff. We had so much fun. But in this episode, as we'll get to, Kendra's the only one who's nice to the staff. And she's right. the only one who cares and the only one who sees them as people. <laughs> yeah. And well, she says, oh, I'm just a normal girl. But we are all just normal girls. Like, none of us grew up with staff. None of yeah. us, like, grew up in a mansion with, like, people doing our laundry and cooking for us. You know? Exactly. But she's the only one portrayed that way. We're portrayed like we came with the house. Right. And we're already there. <laughs> It's like E gave this very specific request that they wanted to see the mansion through the eyes of the girls, but I feel like that first producer only wanted to see it through the eyes of Kendra. Yeah, that could be. So we start off with footage of Kendra in the gym juxtaposed with all this junk food being made in the kitchen. Oh, I didn't even think (laughs) about it like that. But it's the same footage of Kendra working out that they use in episodes one and two. Right. It's like they're trying to establish Kendra as like super disciplined, always working out. But really, it was one time. Right. (laughs) She even says that in commentary, by the way. Yeah. So they're asking Kendra about why she goes downstairs to eat. And she's like, oh, you know, I love the staff. They're people, too. But I felt like the intonation made it sound like we don't do it that way. Like, Yeah. No, I feel like I took it that way at the time. But then I was also still in that mode where everybody's getting edited to say things, you know, that they didn't mean or yeah. like or to make it sound like it. it's a different thing than they meant. So I'm just going to go with it and not worry about it. But watching it back and seeing how everything unfolds, like, you know, watching exactly. it with the bigger picture, you're just kind of like, well, shit, we, you know what? And and it wasn't even true that she goes down to get her tray all the time. She always calls up to the butlers too. Well, also they'll juxtapose footage of Kendra going downstairs with like me ordering dog food right upstairs. But if you guys pay attention in the next episode, Kendra will order dog food to her room. So it's not even like a true that's, thing. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's like it's not even a true thing that she doesn't order things up to her room because she does. And okay, just so you guys understand why this is a big deal too. If we went down to get all our food or to eat all our food down there, it would be in the way and more of a disaster for the mansion and the mansion staff. Yeah, like the kitchen was so busy because they weren't just making food for people who lived there. They were making the employee lunches for all those employees. And then there would be business luncheons, Mm -hmm. like very important business luncheons there that they would make food for. And then sometimes there would be big parties and oftentimes there would be corporate parties where a business would rent out the backyard and the mansions staff catered that too so the kitchen was extremely busy and we were heavily discouraged from ever even being in the kitchen because it was just in everyone's way yeah 
the kitchen or the pantry. And even in the dining room, like if you're sitting in the dining room, then the butlers feel the need to have to come out and like wait on you. Like, do you need something to drink? Do you need any more ketchup? Do you need this? Do you need that? Well, if you're just eating in your room, then they, and you just leave your tray outside and they come and get it whenever they're ready. Like it's more on their terms. I felt like that was a more polite thing to do than to go down there and sit at the table and act like they needed to wait on me. Yeah. Now that you say it, I would have felt like that too. Like anytime I went downstairs to eat, like in the Mediterranean room, I always kind of felt like they needed to felt like they needed to check on me like a waiter. And I yeah. didn't feel like that was necessary. But they're trying to make it look like she's such an angel that she can't even put someone out to bring a tray up to her room. But like, are you doing your own dishes because you feel bad for people? Yeah. Are you doing your own laundry so housekeeping won't do it? No. And it's like, no, I feel like we were kind of all on the same page as far as being respectful to the staff. Right. And just to put our disclaimer in here that I know we've said before, like when we are talking about Kendra in this episode, it's the fault of the producers that she's set up this way. Like, I don't necessarily think she's being like devious and like, I'm going to be out to steal the show. All three of us are just doing our best. We don't know what the show is. We don't know what it's going to be. We're just showing up, doing our part. Yeah. I don't think any of us were immersed in the show enough to be like, okay, it's my time to be a scene stealer now or anything. Well, not only that, none of us had ever even seen an edit of the show yet. Like, we didn't Mm. know anything how we were going to look or how we were going to be portrayed or how this was going to turn out at all. And they didn't ever want us to see edits. Do you remember it was a long time before we were even allowed to look at a rough cut? Yeah. Because the producer would come up and show half the rough cut because half had final cut. So he would go over the whole thing and make notes. And I would be like locked out of the room and I mean full-on locked out like they would lock the door yeah and eventually I think Hef just got lazy and was like oh just let her come in and we got to see the rough cuts but we knew just because we had been conditioned this way over the years that we really didn't have a say like we couldn't raise our hand although Kendra was different there were a couple times when Kendra was like take that out and they did but I never felt like I had that power she was able to do that yeah I can think of two times And I don't want to say what they were because they were kind of like personal, like, okay, but it was stuff that they took out for her. But I never would have felt like I had that power just because I'd been conditioned by Hef to feel like I couldn't speak up or I was going to get yelled at. I never felt like I had that power. I can't think of anything I've ever asked for them to take out or even like wished. I mean, obviously there's things I wish that they could have taken out, (laughs) but like, I don't think that um, I was ever like sitting there. Yeah, I just, I don't think I ever had something that I was like, they have to take this out. And if I did have that feeling, I never felt I had the power to ask for that and and didn't. I felt like the only thing we had felt like we had the power to do was complain about it a little bit in the commentary afterward. Yeah, that was our time to speak out. And even then we were censored. So yeah, and even then we were within a box, like we would have never said anything where I felt like Hef would have got us in trouble or anything like that. So the first thing we're off to is jazz festival. Yeah. How was the jazz festival for you? Like, how would you rank it in our activities, like favorite to least favorite? Hmm. Um, well, I mean, it wasn't one of my favorite things. Obviously, mm-hmm. I love Halloween and like all that kind of <laughs> stuff. But um, I always I enjoyed jazz festival. It was a really long day, though. And the thing that got me most is I think um, it's such a long day and it's so hot out there during mm-hmm. the day. And then and it's you're out there all day long and then it goes into the night and then it gets so cold yeah. at night. And so you go through these really big temperature swings. And by the end of the day, you're just so exhausted. And part of it's from those temperature, dealing Mm -hmm. with the temperature things, because it's exhausting to be so hot and sweating and dying all day. And then it's also exhausting to be freezing cold and shivering and trying to cuddle up in a sweatshirt. Yeah, and you're out there in the elements at the Hollywood Bowl. (laughs) Yeah, you're just out there. And um, plus there's drinking involved and stuff. But I I liked it. I liked when we had a a fun group of girls with us. Back when it was Mm -hmm. the Mean Girls time, it wasn't fun sitting there all day with them. Um, But I liked it when we had a fun group that got into it. And It's not like jazz is my favorite genre of music, but I can get into it for a day. Yeah, it wasn't my favorite. Oh, (laughs) tell me why. (laughs) Oh, I didn't hate it, but I think there was a part of me that maybe semi-dreaded it a little. And I hesitate to say that because I know people are going to think like I'm the most ungrateful, uncultured bitch who like doesn't appreciate jazz music. But I mean, there was things I loved. Like we got to see some amazing acts. Like we got to see Etta James. Like I'm so grateful for that. And we had like this amazing like front and center box at the Hollywood Bowl. Incredible. And I love the picnic baskets they packed for us, which we'll get into those later. But for me, it was just 
a long day sitting in one spot. Because when you think of a music festival, you think of like all these different stages and all these different things to do and you can walk around and do things and pick and choose who you listen to. But this was a long day of sitting in one spot out in the elements. Mm. And, and I know people go to the Hollywood Bowl all the time and the Playboy Jazz Festival. I don't even know if they still do it, but it was always a really popular event. And people get picnic baskets and bottles of wine and stuff. And I think for me, there was a little extra layer of pressure, too, because Hef always expected me to be like this perfectly behaved soldier. So there's that extra thing. Yeah. But for me, it was just a long time to be sitting in one spot. And I can even see it in me in this episode because you see me when we're on the bus there I look like I'm in such a good mood and so relaxed and happy and even like when we first sit down and then at the end of the day on the bus ride back I just look spent (laughs) like I'm ready to drop yeah so it wasn't my favorite yeah (laughs) I can see that I really loved preparing all of the um the baskets you know what I wanted to ask you too they don't show you helping with that because they, they're still on the path that I think they put themselves on when the show was originally supposed to be about the staff, where it's these spoiled girls and the staff is working so hard. And the staff is working so hard. Like, I don't want to take that away from them. Like, they're doing the hard stuff, like cooking the food and putting in the baskets and loading it up and doing all the things. But you are like the creative director of the menu <laughs> and stuff. And they don't show, like, I'm thinking it's just puzzling because you have these three main characters and they don't want to show how we contribute to that world at all. Not that we're doing literal heavy lifting, but like creative stuff. They don't want to show you like making your own outfit. They don't want to, we see that for a split second. They don't want to show you working with the staff to come up with the menu that you know everybody will love and things like that. And they just want to make it look like, oh, we're spoiled bitches who get waited on. We don't contribute anything to this world. It's just cut and dry, black and white. Yeah. So we would have these amazing picnic baskets for the jazz festival. And a couple weeks beforehand, Mary would go, okay, find out what all the girls want, help Ryan like figure out what needs to go into them. And when I would ask all the girls, and usually people were like, I don't know, whatever, you know? So I was like, okay, I gotta get creative with this. We're gonna have fun. What we would do like fried chicken, we would do pasta salad or the um, olive garden salad. We would have the like charcuterie stuff, my parents' cottage cheese dip. We need to make a YouTube video of the cottage cheese dip because people request it. I did. Oh, I did. That's what I know. But we could do another one. (laughs) We could do one together. Didn't you make these things that were like salami and cream cheese and pepper cheese? Yes. Oh, I still make those Those all the time. Yeah, salami, cream cheese, pepper rolls. They're so, so good. Um, I don't even remember what all else but there was a ton of stuff in there desserts hmh chocolate cake yeah the food was my favorite part i think it was so fun and how baller are we with 24 bottles of crystal i know like who is drinking all that i know i think on the commentary you say um take that mtv cribs (laughs) (laughs) it was totally like an mtv cribs moment when they're describing that Oh, there's a scene um, where it says where you're on the phone asking if you can bring Duke. And I was like, wait, what? Was she really (laughs) trying to bring Duke? I have to know. I couldn't have been. When I watched that scene, I don't remember filming it. But I think it was just one of those moments where the cameras come into your room and they want you to do something. Oh. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to be like the typical Y2K bimbo with a small dog and be like, can I bring my dog? (laughs) Duke, you're denied. Because like, where would he have even shit? Oh, I was thinking this is bad on so many levels like <laughs> there's there's so many reasons why you can't bring them even if you can bring them yeah i wonder if pets are even allowed at hollywood bowl i don't i doubt it think <laughs> so i've never seen a pet there i think i was just trying to be cute for the cameras like the cameras are in your room and you need to do something what are you doing to prepare prep for the Hollywood Bowl, you know? Yeah. (laughs) Trying to bring my dog. And then I think the next scene is they show me prepping for my dress, which I had grand ideas for this dress, you guys. I thought that I was gonna have like, I don't even know the technical terms of what it's called. Sorry, I'm a music illiterate, but it, the graph of the, yeah. ba- the bars, you know? And I wanted to have like that fancy music note on yeah. there. And then like the little notes that I did and all, all the different notes. And I wanted to have it go all the way around the edge of the dress. And I got the dress back so late. And it was like, you see me scrambling, like literally last minute trying to cut out these music notes and glue them on. So it didn't turn out exactly exactly as I had planned. But, but your dress and ponytail were so cute. Thank you. It was very like 50s. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so a couple things about my scene in the bathroom. One, I'm a cosmetics 
hoarder. Like how much <laughs> shit is on my bathroom sink? Do you, do you still do that? No, I'm a lot more organized. Oh. I have it like all put away and like all the extra stuff is like organized and home edit style, like filed. Oh, nice. I love that. <laughs> But also, my Frankie B shorts are so cute. I wish I still had those. I love Frankie B. Frankie B was like this low-rise jeans brand in the 2000s, and it was so cute. It was very cute, and everybody wore them. Mm -hmm. Everyone. So then we're going to Hollywood Bowl, and we get in this giant bus. And I think it's funny, because we refer to going to the Hollywood Bowl as traveling. And I think that shows just how insular our little world was. (gasps) But, But to be fair, just so you guys know, if you're not from L.A., traffic around the Hollywood Bowl like when there's an event at the Hollywood Bowl you don't even want to drive by there because traffic is so bad with everybody trying to get into the parking lot oh even the freeway like I was leaving your house on Friday night and there was something going on at the Hollywood Bowl and I was like no (laughs) and I was on the freeway (laughs) yeah and the Playboy Mansion was like over near Bel Air like over more on the west side so anytime we would drive which wasn't often, to Hollywood. It just felt like a big excursion. (laughs) And I remember the other long drive we would do was to go to a Laker game once a year. And we would always cut across using Olympic and we would pass by some residential houses. And every single time we would go, Hef would look out the window and be like, itty bitty houses for itty bitty people. Like yeah. he said that every time. I know, and I'd be like, wait, these are just regular houses for regular people. Yeah, what are you talking about? Houses. This is normal. This is <laughs> <laughs> not itty bitty at all. Yeah. But I think, you know what, also, it's hard to get across town in a regular car, but in a big old bus. I can't even yeah. imagine oh trying God. to drive that. Driving. And why were we taking the big old bus? Because the camera crew, didn't we usually take like a limo? We usually took like a limo or like a motorhome type thing. Uh-huh. But I think this time we took the giant bus because one, we had a big group with us. And then two, the, the camera crew. Yeah. For sure. It just made so many people. Plus, we have all that security. A lot of the staff is already there, though. Yeah. So then we meet Destiny, who's a playmate, but they don't introduce her. It's just like all of a sudden there's an extra person there. (laughs) Yeah. To be fair, they don't introduce any of the other girls, but you don't really see them do much. It's just Kendra or Destiny kind of becomes Kendra's sidekick, but they don't introduce her. She's just there all of a sudden. But Destiny was a playmate, I want to say like early 2005. So we probably met her like in 2004. And I remember when I first gave her the tour around the house, like I was really impressed with her because she was like 19 and like had graduated high school early and was like already in real estate school. She really seemed to like have her shit together. And I remember she was from Vegas and I was fascinated because I'd never met anybody who was from Las Vegas before. (laughs) And I remember she had really long acrylic nails. And at the time that wasn't really the style, at least like in California. And I remember thinking that must be how all the Vegas girls do their nails. That's so (laughs) funny. Well, and then uh, we all get on the bus and Kendra and Destiny immediately go to the back of the bus. And this is the first time where I'm watching this feeling like, wait, this is the first time I feel like Kendra's like pulling away from the group. Yeah. And they were allowed to listen to music back there, which was kind of a weird double standard because we would have never been allowed to listen to music and they're having like their rap music going and singing along and somehow the show manages to like get it out of the sound but they won't do that for anybody else okay well there's a few things about this one they go all the way to the back of the bus by themselves at the start it shows like a few other girls back there but then if you watch closely there's nobody else back there with them except for a security person and I think just because he didn't have anywhere else to sit and they are allowed to do like their own thing back there when I say allowed to I don't mean like they shouldn't have been able to do that but there was more than a double standard in my opinion I feel like there was a triple standard on how things went I feel like you were not allowed to do anything and were under the closest guard I wasn't even allowed to be like excited about anything or Hef would get pissed and then I was allowed to do more than that and I was allowed to be excited and and get a little bit crazier and stuff but if I were to have gone back in the back say with just like Crystal or something and everybody else was out front he would have come back there and yelled at me and said what the fuck are you doing back here like get out there with everybody else like why are you being antisocial like he would never have been okay with that and I even comment and commentary I said you guys are being antisocial and she said we just wanted our own space oh 
Oh, and that I'm must thinking, have been nice. I, I never got a second of space in that house. Yeah, and then what you say about turning off, uh, letting them have the music on out there, back there, which allowed for them to have their, create their own party. Like, like I mentioned before, I'm not even allowed to have my TV on in my room when they're shooting a scene. Yeah, it was really weird how not only was there this huge, like you said, triple standard with the way Hef treated us and what he let us do, but Kendra got away with random stuff a lot more in the early days. Like, I remember being told I, I had like a Mickey Mouse shirt on and they're like, take that off. We don't own the IP. We can't have that on the show. But then Kendra has like a grumpy the dwarf shirt in one of her interviews and nobody cares. Yeah. So what's the difference between those two things? It's weird. Yeah. So I just felt like this was the first time Kendra was like kind of pulling away. And I feel like the cameras loved it because it made her look fun and exciting. And they're the part life of the party. And then we're like the, the rest of us, all the other girls and Hef and you and I are like the boring fuddy duddies again out in the front of the bus. Making fun facts about coconuts. Yeah, because Which I feel like the only reason I'm saying something so random is because we're not allowed to have music on and it's so quiet up there. And that's literally the only thing I can think of to say. <laughs> right. Well, and then I feel like for people who might say, well, why didn't you just go back and join them? Like if you thought that was more fun back there, why didn't you go back and join them? If I would have went back to join them, I would have they would have looked at me like I just killed the vibe or ruined their party. And Hef would have been like, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah, and then I would have been yelled at for being back there anyway. So it's just, there was no way. Yeah. Like, you just have to let it, uh uh-huh. Can we talk about the most disgusting thing in this episode? Uh, Do you know what I'm going to say? I do. And it makes, (laughs) well, there's like a couple of disgusting things. There's like three disgusting things that come to mind in this episode. Okay, well, first one is when Kendra's sucking the flavoring off the Cheetos and she puts the nasty saliva covered naked mole rat Cheeto back in a bowl and then Destiny doesn't know so she starts eating them. Oh my god I want to throw up just thinking about it. Ick, 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 ick. Ew. What were your gross things? Are we at them yet? Or No I'll point them out when we get to them but that is definitely one of them. That was one of the three. Do you think it's weird, too, that Kendra's not eating the chips? She's just licking the flavoring off of them? I didn't really think about that, but now that you mention it, because she also doesn't eat cake later. Yeah, I have that in my notes later, too. And then there's, it's not in this episode, but there's like another episode, and it was probably shot around the same time where her and Destiny are talking about the sleep diet. Oh, right. Which is kind of a joke, but I think they're also like legit talking about dieting. Yeah, well, they're saying that they sleep all day, and as long as you're sleeping all day, you're not eating, so it's the sleep diet. Do you think that was because of that comment? I mean, don't get me wrong, like, we're all super watching our weight. Like, I remember counting every calorie I ate there because there's so much pressure to look a certain way. But there was this moment where we were going to my friend's engagement party, and we were in the limo, and Hef turns to Kendra, and it's just the four of us in the limo, and Hef turns to Kendra out of the blue and is like... You know, it looks like you've been putting on weight. Like, you, you should start hitting the gym. And I just remember yeah. being so freaked out by that. And, like, what the fuck was that? I wanted to crawl under the, like, seat or something. Like, I was so mortified for her and, yeah. and humiliated for her. And the fact that he had to say that to her ever, but then to say it in front of all of us and... I was just, I can feel it now, the uncomfortableness. No, and like in a perfect world, I should have stuck up for her and I should have been like, no, she looks great. But I know why I didn't. Like I didn't do that because Hef would have been fucking pissed and like had my head on a pike if I dared argue with him. So all I could do in the moment was just look out the window and pretend I didn't even hear it because I thought maybe it would be less embarrassing for her if I pretended like I nobody heard it. Yeah, I mean, I glanced over at her and came, kind of gave her a look like, oh my God, like, I'm so sorry, kind of like, or hopefully that was the look yeah. I gave her. And it looked like she had like tears in her eyes. I would have. Yeah. And I think I said something to her later, like he's, you know, just an asshole about stuff like that. Like, you look great, you know, but like, I don't know. It was still inappropriate and just so humiliated and so mortifying for her especially but all of us like I don't want to yeah because like what the fuck do you do and like I feel bad thinking back that I didn't like find her afterward and say something about it but I also know why I didn't do that because I didn't trust anybody in that place so I don't want to come even if I'm being sympathetic to that person I don't want to come and be like 
oh, Hef's a dick because I'm terrified that they're going to go back and be like, so Holly said you were a dick. Yeah, true. It's just like a no-win situation. That is very true. Well, and I just didn't remember her looking bad. No, never. So. Never. I don't even know where it came from or what he was thinking that day. Yeah. And he did it to other people, too. Like, there was a playmate he did it to in the middle of buffet once. I remember. Buffet dinner. You guys, everybody's in there. Like, probably 30 people eating dinner. The The main table is all full. There's side tables that are full. The Mediterranean room. Maybe they didn't hear in the Mediterranean room. But yeah. there's, like, butlers and stuff walking around. People walking around. And Hef just got up and said something to her right there at the... She was standing at the end of the table. And he got up, walked all the way down there deliberately just to tell her that she looked like she was gaining weight and needed to figure out where the gym is stay away from the cookies and stuff. oh like what the fuck and not quietly didn't pull no, her everybody aside. heard it yeah everybody was like <gasps> panicking the worst i do want to say that i love that destiny was representing blonde mafia yeah that was so cute if you guys notice her blonde mafia t-shirt when i was at the mansion i had started a little t-shirt line that was called blonde mafia yeah i was gonna say you know what those shirts remind me of is we used to do this thing i don't know why we called it this but we used to go just us girls to like knott's berry farm and then the melting pot and we called it players day yeah. and we would wear those shirts to players day <laughs> oh remember our cute old west photos we used to do too yes i really want audra to come back to la and we can like do a players day <gasps> that would be that, so that was fun. during like the Audra era. We would do that a lot when yeah. Audra was hanging out. Audra, Crystal, Ashley, Stacy, yeah, Stacy, me, you, whatever playmates were in town. I remember one year I even had like some high school friends in town and they came along. Yeah, it that was, was fun. fun too. Yeah. You know what's funny is when Kendra and Destiny are sitting in the back, there was this little bowl in front of Destiny and I thought it was an Olive Garden salad because the kitchen, we loved Olive Garden salads, so the mansion kitchen had their version of the Olive Garden salad they would make us that was actually better than the one at Olive Garden. <laughs> and I saw this little bowl in front of Destiny like, she has an Olive Garden salad. But then I rewatched the episode with commentary and it's actually candy. <laughs> Like, where did I get the Olive Garden salad? Like, just, I think it's just the colors and, like, the footage is just grainy enough and it just goes by just fast enough yeah. that I thought she had a little Olive Garden salad in front of her. When you said it was an Olive Garden salad, I was like, that's weird. How did she get an Olive Garden salad? And you're like, probably from the picnic basket. But I know that the picnic baskets are taken there ahead of time. So I was like, wait, did she, like, go down there in the morning and yeah. pull out an Olive Garden salad? Was there no, an was extra candy. one? Was there? Yes, yeah, so I was, like, really trying to figure that out. So the first thing we see when we arrive at the jazz festival is Jamie Foxx. And you know what I think of every time I see Jamie Foxx? I think so. Oh shit. Oh shit. Oh shit. shit. Okay, the story behind that is every time Hef would throw a party, he would have his videographers just roam around the party catching footage. And he would always cut together a couple different cuts. Like there would be an extended cut of like highlights of what happened at the party. And then there would be like a 10 minute media cut that he would send out to the media. And that would just show like Hef and um, like the celebrities that came and like highlights. And this is off topic, but you know what grossed me out that I haven't thought of in years? There was always a shot of us at the end of the night or the end of Hef's night. He would always kind of go up early, walking into Hef's bedroom at the end of the media clip. Like that's what he would send out to the media. Like, oh. look at me going upstairs with all these girls. And I'm so grossed out thinking of that now. Like on one way, um, on one hand, I think of it as just like kind of a nice close because it starts with, um, it always starts with all the girls walking down mm -hmm. the stairs and Hef down the stairs and then taking a group photo and then he takes a picture with the jello shot girls and then it shows like a montage of hef with all the different celebrities and people dancing and like it's like a 10 minute clip like that and then ends with us going upstairs and the door shutting and i always thought of it as just kind of a cute way to like close something up but i get what you're saying like the connotation that 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 sends the message that sends to everybody yeah. of what's happening now well i think when we were in that bubble we tended or at least i did tended to think of things like i put like a cutesy layer over it yeah like oh it's just cute we're going upstairs no it was him bragging like look at all these girls i'm going to bed with and sending that literally sending that to the news true like douchebag true i didn't even think <laughs> of it that way the whole time and you know what sucks about that a lot of times anybody who was at our table would come up with us like even if they were playmates not to go to bed with hef but just in the night with us because they don't want to be out there necessarily without our table and with hef and everything yeah like they would go hang out in your room or yeah, they were staying we would... in one of the guest rooms or something but it looked like everybody was going upstairs to bone yeah 
And totally. it reminds me of like, remember that picture we took for our first pictorial that looked like you're laying on the bed and Kendra's on top of you and like I'm on top of Kendra. Yeah, the like, dog pile. Yeah, and at the time we're all smiling in the picture and laughing and we think it's funny and this is just how you cram three naked girls into that shape of a photo for the magazine. And I just thought of it as kind of this cute, fun photo. But after like being out of the mansion a couple years, I saw that photo again and I was like, this is the most pornographic looking three-way photo photo I've ever seen in my life and it's weird how at the time I just didn't think of it that way oh no I, I thought seen of that us photo in a just while. like goofing around or the one where Kendra's like licking my stomach in the grotto oh that one I that always was like so whoa corny. but at the time I just thought it was funny like oh my god we're so funny and I look at that now and I'm like <laughs> hiding my face <laughs> but we'll get to those we'll get yeah. to those but can we talk a little bit more about those videos oh, yeah, for yeah, the yeah. press because sorry I got so off track it's okay but that was like so fun to for do that us, because eventually like after a couple of years of living at the mansion we started this tradition where I would come to your room the next day hungover yeah we would order all this junk food and we would ask the video department to play the highlight reel in your room and we the would long watch it. version and for some reason we thought it was so funny like I remember the Jamie Foxx thing because he was dancing in this line of girls going oh shit oh shit and we thought it was so funny for some reason and also at that party there was footage of like one of the black eyed peas break dancing yeah and I thought that was so funny and I think I was so easily amused just because the bubble I lived in I guess because it really they weren't doing really weird stuff but I remember thinking it was so funny and also it was so fun for us to watch those because we were kind of like stuck at half's table like we didn't get to walk around and see all the crazy things people were doing because I would always hear these stories from other playmates of like celebrities doing rails behind the guest house and like the drummer guy standing up naked in the grotto and I used to go to playboy parties before I was a girlfriend but I never stayed very long I would go and I would always loved the parties and thought they were so fun but I would just go for a couple hours and leave like I wasn't like hanging out till four in the morning seeing all the crazy shit happen so we thought this was our chance to see what's going on it was our chance to see a lot of things going on yeah I mean obviously not everything but whatever the video cameras caught we got to see yeah so and it was it was really fun that was one of my favorite traditions I think was the day after watching the videos I loved it too it was so fun I will say though I kind of liked being, we say stuck in Hess booth, but I liked being stuck in there. Cause yeah, I think I'm making it sound worse than it is. Cause we were, I mean, technically we were like, if we wanted to go, like if I said to have, Hey, I'm going to do a walk around and look at the party. He would have been fucking pissed and not let me do it. I feel like later on, I did say, I'm going to, I want to walk around, like just do a lap really quick. And he would he would laugh at me and be like okay but he was only okay with that because you stayed there like we you and I wouldn't have been able to walk around yeah and you know what is kind of a bummer about that to me is you know what would have been fun is like after we went upstairs and like Hef's ready to go to sleep sometimes I would go down to your room and we would like look over the balcony and like yell at people and we thought that was another one of my favorite throw Mardi Gras beads if it was the Mardi Gras party But it's crazy to me that after years and years of me being like the most well-behaved, most ride or die, psycho girlfriend, not psycho girlfriend, but like psycho how ride or die I was. Yeah. I never was able to earn any trust. Like I could have never said to have, hey, I know you're tired. I'm going to go down and do like a quick circle of the party. I'll be up in like 30 minutes. No way. Never. Like he would have acted like I was going to go do a public gangbang. And like, what would I have ever done? Like the video cameras are down there. His friends are down there. People are watching. But to me, it would have been so fun to go down there, have in my like regular pajamas, have a few more drinks, like hang out with like Ray Anthony and Dickie Ban. Like that would have been, those are like old friends of Hef's, like older men. Like that would have been my idea of fun. Like not trying to get banged by somebody in the grotto. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But it's just weird how I never was able to earn that trust. Like that was one of the things when I look back on that relationship, how disappointing it was, was I was so ride or die for him, but I was never allowed to earn any trust. Well, even later when I did go and make a circle around and stuff, it was always with security. Like I wasn't allowed to do it by myself or anything. Yeah. But I think Kendra did come back down to the parties later. Oh no, she did it all the time and like got away with it. Yeah. But I guess if he had girlfriends banging butlers behind the movie screen, I guess he had reason to be paranoid. Yeah, for but sure. Still, you would think I would have earned some trust after like fucking five years. You, you know? think? <laughs> you would think. 
Okay, so now <laughs> we're back at the jazz festival. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry for After that, that uh, little... long walk through the mansion parties. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, guys. <laughs> Um, so we're back at the mansion. I mean, sorry, we're back at the jazz festival and Kendra wants the beach balls. Yeah, because people are like bopping around beach balls and throwing them back and forth at the jazz festival. So Which she, is a fun tradition at a lot of different concerts. Yeah. So she sends Brian to go get the beach balls and he's like, I'll give you a Playboy water for a beach ball. And that's funny now. But back then, I've said this before when we were talking about the water bottles, you know, back then there weren't as many readily available, like customized things that yeah. you can get now. So seeing the Playboy water bottles, like people thought that was like a really cool souvenir. So people were like, damn, yeah, take my beach balls. I want the Playboy water. But it makes me think of how Hef only drank Pepsi. So he only had Pepsi like at the mini fridges and at the bar all around the mansion. And I remember when I first started coming up to Fun in the Sun, I thought Playboy was sponsored by Pepsi. So did I. I didn't realize that was just because it was always like the Playboy waters and then Pepsis. Like he had the mini glass Pepsi bottles. So I didn't realize that was just his personal preference. I thought Playboy was sponsored by Pepsi. That's what I thought too And he said he liked Pepsi because back when he was a kid, which was the 1930s, 30s guys so we're taking a trip back (laughs) coca-cola was like the old people's brand like his parents drank coca-cola and he thought pepsi was like the young edgy brand so he always drank pepsi because of that interesting yeah i didn't know that was why yeah do you have a preference coke yeah particularly dyke a pepsi just doesn't have the same taste yeah sometimes uh like, I'm definitely a Coke person, too, but every once in a while, I'll have a Pepsi, and I'll be like, oh, wait, that's not that bad. What? Don't get me wrong. Like, if I'm at a restaurant, and I want a Diet Coke, and they're like, is Diet Pepsi okay? That's totally fine. Yeah. But I completely prefer a Diet. There's something about a Diet Coke, and I don't drink them very often, because I'm like, eh, I don't want all the aspartame, but I love a Diet Coke. That's so funny. I think it's even better than regular Coke. I don't know why. Oh, so it's not just Brian that goes to get the balloons. I mean, the balls. The all the staff like goes out. Carlina's out there, and she looks so cute. She Carlina does look so cute. Uh, by the way, Carlina's one of our butlers um, at the mansion, and she's at Jazz Festival helping in this um, episode. And she just looks really cute. Yeah, I bet that scene was encouraged because, like I said before, I think they're still kind of on the storyline of like we're going to include the staff a lot in this show yeah and this episode is kind of the last gasp of like really trying to include the staff not that they're still in the show but we get into another scene later where they're like doing stuff with the beach balls and it just reminds me of the pilot where they're really trying to make the staff characters and you don't see that too much in the show moving forward so then it kind of cuts from like daytime to nighttime and things are wrapping up and um, it shows this really sweet scene like you're leaning on half like kind of mm-hmm. like Head half asleep. Shoulder, yeah. yeah, all romantic. And then it shows Destiny and Kendra doing that too. And I thought when I watched it, I thought, oh, that's cute. But then when I was looking at my scrapbook photos, there's also a picture of Kendra and I doing that to each yeah, other. Yeah, you guys looking very cozy, but they don't want to show that on the show. Yeah, and I thought, wait a minute, I just watched this episode and and it shows and the episode chose to only show Destiny and Kendra again being close. You know why? I think they had an agenda from the beginning to make it us against Kendra. They very much do that in the end of episode one, which I've talked about before. And I've made it clear that when I say, I think Hef needs to get rid of the other girls, I was talking about the mean girls from the past. Right. And also, I just want to make it clear to you guys too, that back in the day when I was ever like annoyed with the Kendra situation, it was because I would get in trouble for stuff Kendra did. Like I was always the whipping boy. Like if Kendra was late, Hef would yell at me. Mm -hmm. So of course that's fucking annoying. But there was never any competition between me and Kendra. Like I never thought she was going to like steal my man or wanted my spot or anything like that. Yeah. And I never felt like you or Kendra were going to stick around more than like a couple years, especially Kendra. And I don't think Hef thought she was going to stick around very long. I think it was very much like she's here for a good time, not for a long time. I don't think he was ever trying to convince her to stick around much much longer and I always felt like you and Kendra both were very supportive of Hef's and my relationship I thought so too yeah so I don't like it that they tried to color it that way 
but also they keep, they perpetuate it because they try and make it look like it's Kendra's the underdog, everybody wants to root for, it's Kendra against the world, and they never wanted to like foster a friendship between us and Kendra or show that. And there was also this scene we shot that was never used in the show at all where we went to this like miniature golf place it was called mount asia and it was like one of those really cute places that has like an ice cream parlor and they have like go-karts and mini golf and stuff like bumper that. boats yeah and we went it was one of the first things we shot for the show we went and like had a day there and they filmed it and i can understand why it, it wasn't really used in the show because there wasn't any drama or really any storyline but the footage had to have been so cute just because the setting i'm shocked they didn't use it for like a montage my or something photos like that. from it are cute so this the we'll the put video, the photos in the patreon so you guys can see yeah the video has to be cute and but i feel like it should have at least been like this fun mon- montage but you're right like we were getting along we were having fun and, and they don't want to ever show the three of us as a unit being friends especially they without it, hef yeah they want it to be us against kendra So that's why they're always so eager to like give Kendra a sidekick. Like they don't want to show you with your sister until they absolutely have to, but they're jump on the Kendra and destiny pairing because they want Kendra separate from us and they want us against Kendra. Rude. I know. And very untrue, but I do feel like, you know, all the beef Kendra and I have had over the years, I feel like that characterization by the show helps that along. Oh, it definitely plants the seeds. So you guys, we ended up talking for two hours about this episode. So we're going to split it into a little two-parter. We will be back next week to talk about the rest of the episode. By the way, guys, we have a whole extra podcast called Slumber Party available on our Patreon. So check it out at patreon.com slash girlsnextlevel. And we'll see you guys next week. Bye, guys.